Hi, I'm Nisha Gar, and today you all get to hear from a very special person, the one and only Stella Blen. Most of you have probably seen Stella on stage, expertly playing roles from Hermia in A Midsummer Night's Dream to Connie in A Chorus Line. Stella is also a very talented musician, able to play many instruments with little to no instruction, and I'm especially jealous of her perfect pitch. Beyond the arts, Stella also loves science and is the STEM club president. I was lucky enough to be in her AP chemistry class and every day she would walk in with a smile on her face and a cheerful greeting for us all, despite the high level of stress usually present in the room. This example shows you how exuberant of a person Stella is, spreading joy throughout the school. Though I've only given you a small glimpse of Stella's personality, I'm sure you all are excited to hear from her yourself. So without further delay, I give you Stella Jean Blen. It was 2013, the year of some legendary ex-turkeys like Sophia Treadway and Eden Johnson. <laughs> I was the new kid in third grade, and my parents felt that putting me on a sports team was a great way to put myself out there and make some friends. So my story begins where most St. Mary's student stories begin, and that is, of course, on the Blue Bombers soccer team. <laughs> Only then would I discover an important truth about myself. I was really, really, really good at sitting on the bench. <laughs> I would get some pity play when we were winning by a lot or losing by a lot, but I didn't get much playing time in games because I just wasn't very good. I went to all the practices and tried to do well. It just wasn't coming naturally. My parents figured that it could have been that the Blue Bombers were just too good and that I could try another team. So I tried the purple team and the pink team over the course of two years, but got the same results. The fact of the matter was, I was afraid of the ball, I had allergy-induced asthma, and I was huffing and puffing, and my bright pink glasses would always fall onto the field because I refused to wear those ugly sports glasses. <laughs> the situation was not improving. In sixth grade, I decided to trade out soccer for volleyball. But alas, the fear of the ball did not go away, and I was one of two people cut from the seventh grade team the following year. <laughs> <laughs> volleyball was a no. These sports were only fall sports, though, and since I was tall and needed a winter sport, basketball was the obvious choice. I played basketball for four years, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grades. I was a little better at basketball since I had the height and it was indoors and I understood the rules, but still, I remained a bench warmer. In sixth grade, every player was supposed to play in a game at least once, which helped my chances for sure. I remember one specific game where I paid attention to how long I was in for, and it was exactly seven minutes out of the 48 in total. Oh wait, did I say minutes? I meant seconds. <laughs> seven seconds. I was mortified, embarrassed, and finally aware of how terrible I actually was. So, Coach Casey, if you're out there and remember me being on the sixth grade basketball team, this is my thank you letter for not keeping me in any longer. Because this was my main character moment. That seven second game was what inspired me to quit and focus on other things I enjoyed. So, I auditioned for Into the Woods and got to play Jack, which was the most fun thing I had ever experienced. I got the lead role in 42nd Street in eighth grade, and I felt so happy about singing and acting in front of a crowd. Now, I've done at least three plays and musicals every year since then, and I don't plan on stopping performing anytime soon. But, I would not have been so inspired to do what I do now if I hadn't stopped doing sports in the first place. As St. Mary's girls, we have always had to struggle with the idea of what it means to be a quitter. Working hard has always been equivalent to success. We're constantly posed with questions like, should I keep doing gymnastics for another year even though I've spent three years learning how to do a cartwheel and I still can't? <laughs> the answer can be yes if it's something you enjoy, but it also might be a good use of your time to stop if you don't enjoy it. But the implied version of questions like these is, is quitting equivalent to failing? This question is a little bit more complex and varies depending on the person, but I believe that the short answer is no. Quitting does not have to be the end of a journey. It's just the transition to your journey onward. Life is a step-by-step -step process that requires some doors to close before the more meaningful ones open, even though closing those doors can be difficult. 
When you graduate high school, it could just as easily be called quitting high school because you're formally stating that that journey in your education is over. We just choose to focus on the positive transitional part of graduation, which means that you're moving on to the next step in your life. If we can apply this concept to one thing, there isn't anything stopping us from applying it to every scenario in which you're quitting. When I dropped my sport, I was just beginning my journey into theater. When you quit an awful job or drop a hard class, you're just transitioning toward a happier life. In summary, quitting is what you make it, and whether it's positive or negative is completely up to you. To my perseverant class of 23, we have been through so much in our time here, and I'm so grateful that we have got to live through this segment of our life together. I cannot wait to see which doors you all open after we close the door of high school. Thank you.